This time on Allies or Enemies, we are looking at Cascadia. Cascadia is a one to four player game designed by Randy Flynn with art by the always excellent Beth Sobel that puts you deep in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. In Cascadia, players are building out their forested Rocky Mountain landscapes by placing tiles, while populating those tiles with bears, foxes, hawks, elk, and salmon. It's a bit of a gateway game with simple mechanics and a great look, but with an interesting enough puzzle for fans of games like Baron Park to sink their sharp, omnivorous ursine teeth into. Let's start by looking at how it plays. Each round, players will take turns first choosing one of the four combinations of land tiles and animal tokens and then placing both in whichever order they want. Tiles can go anywhere as long as they touch side to side with another tile. Regions don't even need to match, though it is a good idea for scoring. Animal tokens just need to go on any empty tile with the same animal symbol. Then you refill the row and play moves on. There are a few small rules. Like if you put an animal on a keystone tile, you get a token that gives you a one-time benefit. But the main thing to remember are the scoring cards. At the start of each game, you will choose one of these for each of the five animals, and these will dictate how you need to place your animals in order to score points. Once you run out of tiles, which will happen after 20 rounds, players add points from animal cards as well as points for groups of terrain types, and the greatest conservationist is crowned. Tile placement games always have a kind of inherent replayability, and Cascadia is no different. Every game will bring a new puzzle with a new combination of animals and tiles, but Cascadia does go deeper than that by adding the variable scoring cards. Each animal has four different cards, or five if you nab the promos. Each one is only a slight variation on a theme. Bears score for groups, salmon score for runs, foxes score for surrounding animal types. But these variations and combinations are enough to make substantial changes to the overall gameplay. There is also a kind of light campaign mode of various achievements in the back of the book that is reminiscent of AEG's other recent tile-laying game, Calico, that offers a bit of an extra challenge for those that want it. Because you are building your own thing, the main points of interaction are a tiny bit of hate drafting and competition for the largest terrain bonuses. And both will be slightly more challenging at higher player counts, but regardless of player count, a game will always take 20 turns. It's just that those turns are gonna move faster with fewer players, whereas the market will change more with more. It is worth noting that regardless of player number, finding the perfect combo of wildlife slash terrain can lead to some analysis paralysis. This is a game where you sometimes have to live with the least bad choice and just hope it works out later. Sometimes life gives you elk and sometimes all you get are foxes. Also, the solo mode, which is a straight-up score challenge, does work just fine if you are in the mood to solve your own puzzle. This is one of the places that Cascadia shines, with a terrific balance of the right amount of extra quality without going over the top. The tiles are all a nice, sturdy cardboard, with the regions and animals all well-defined and easy to see. And the oversized scoring cards have beautiful artwork that we had to look closely and decide if they were photos or not. They are not, which is pretty impressive. But the stars of the show are the wooden animal tokens. These are just super simple wooden discs with heat transferred stickers on top. But that decision to make the step up from cardboard makes all the difference. They are pleasingly smooth, look great, and have such a nice jangly feeling when you grab for them in the bag. It's all the sort of pleasing presentation that will make newer gamers feel a bit more comfortable giving it a whirl. Cascadia is exactly the kind of thing that will work as a lightly forested gateway for new gamers. It's accessible, it's pretty, and it's easy to teach, but it is sneakily more of a steady hike than a walk in the park. The scoring cards give a nice bit of variety, and the keystone tokens add a smidge of extra strategy, but really, it's the simple pleasure of a well-made tile placement game that is going to have players coming back to it over and over. That and the combination of theme and artwork. This is the kind of game you could spend a whole day playing with your family at the cabin. 
For experienced players, it's not as deep or thinky as something like Isle of Cats or even Calico, but it is still a solid puzzle, and for newbies, it has more layers than something like King Domino, but without pushing too hard. It might not jump right into your top 10, but it is likely to be a solid hit for a wide range of gamers. And that is it. Have you played Cascadia? Let us know what you thought, or if you have a suggestion of another terrific recent game, please drop that in the comments as well. And as always, please like and subscribe, and hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.